What's up, Geeksters? It's me, Omar, from GeeksterLabs.com, and the product I'm going to be showing you today is something that was sent to me free for review from Sarah Monik, and today we have the SR PAX2. So this is basically a two-channel active audio mixer with a preamplifier and phantom power, and it's ideal for recording audio from two sources and mixing them to your camera. And it retails for $160, and I'll have a link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it on Amazon. And keep in mind that all of my audio in this review is being recorded using this mixer. So I'm using a Sennheiser AVX wireless mic system that's XLR, and that's plugged into this uh, into this mixer right here. And I'm using the phantom power from the mixer as well, so it's 48 volt phantom power. Now this mixer is intended for cameras that have a 3.5 microphone jack input on them, and it attaches to the base of the camera using a tripod mount on the camera. And uh, the mixer also has a quarter inch and a half inch threaded socket on its base, which allows you to mount it on a tripod or on a case as well. It's pretty compact and lightweight, weighing less than a pound, but it's completely made of metal, so it should be very durable and hold up to heavy use. So let's take a quick tour and check out the inputs and settings of this mixer. So on the front we have two sets of inputs that will accept a variety of mic or uh, line level sources. So on the left we have the dual left and right XLR inputs, and on the right we have the 3.5 millimeter inputs for left, right, or stereo. At the top we have a dial which will allow you to screw the mixer into the tripod mount of your camera. And there's a nice rubber pad on the top of the mixer so it won't scratch up the bottom of your camera. On the left side we have the battery compartment which holds the uh, 9 volt battery which should give you about 5 hours of life if you don't use the phantom power. They say it will give you about 3 hours of uh, battery life if you do use phantom power with this. On the right there's a cold shoe mount in case you want to attach any other accessories like a shotgun mic or a camera light as well. So now let's check out the control panel on the back of the mixer. So here's where all the fun switches and dials are to adjust your audio settings. So the first thing you'll notice is the backlit uh, display which shows the sound levels and decibels for each channel and it also features a battery life indicator and it shows whether or not you're recording in stereo or mono. So below that we have our, our 3.5 audio out which works great with the included stereo coil cable which connects the, to the mic input on your camera. And next we have the headphone jack which lets you monitor your audio levels. And after that we have our left and right control knobs to adjust the signal of each channel. And they actually have a really nice subtle click to them as well so they're not completely smooth turning knobs. On the right we have the power on and off switch and below that we have the mono stereo switch. So if you're only using one input channel to record like I'm doing right now, you'll want to make sure you keep it in mono setting because then it'll split the signal to the left and right channels. Next we have the input 1 and 2 settings. Now don't forget input 1 is for the 3.5 millimeter input on the front of the mixer and input 2 is for the XLR inputs. Okay. And both settings are basically the same with the exception of the voltage for the phantom power. So we have a switch for the 5 volt and 3 volt phantom power or an off setting for input 1 and a switch for 48 volt phantom power for input 2. The next switches are for the left and right settings and we have three options for these. Line, mic and phantom power. So line and mic are basically the same thing except the mic option offers a 20 decibel gain which you would want to use for like a self-powered microphone or a wireless mic system. The line option is set to zero decibels and you'll probably use that for other audio devices like, a, like an mp3 player. And if you want to use the phantom power option, you'll have to set it to pH for phantom power for that channel. And, and be careful with this option because if you're using mics that don't operate on phantom power, you might damage them. So those are all the functions and settings for the SRPAX2 mixer uh, from Saramonic. Like I said, all of the audio you've been listening to is a sample of what this mixer is going to sound like. Uh, once again, I'm using the Sennheiser AVX wireless mic system, which uses XLR inputs, and that's plugged into the into this mixer and going straight into my Panasonic Lumix G7 camera. So this is definitely a good option under $200 for adding XLR or dual audio inputs to your camera setup. And this really gives you a nice flexible setup here to where you can adjust your audio settings on the fly right when you're recording your audio directly into your camera. I think it's a really interesting product and I definitely recommend you guys checking it out if you do use DSLR or mirrorless cameras, which are kind of notorious for having subpar audio built in. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. If you have any questions about this product, please post it down below. I read each and every comment on all of my videos and I always get back to you guys as quickly as possible. Just once again to mention, if you guys are interested in purchasing this product, I have an Amazon link in the description below as well. So if you want to purchase this product off of Amazon, please use that link. I would appreciate that very much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And and if you want to stay up to date with all of my content on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video review.